Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Acts 16, 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to Neapolis, from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Maybe we should just say it. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, hallelujah, grace and peace to each one of you this day. Our gospel today comes from the gospel according to John 14. Dad, don't worry, you'll, you'll 
you'll find out this week. So, Dad, if you're listening at home, um, here goes. So the reason I talk about tools today, I want to talk to you about the tools that you would find in a toolbox, some of the common ones. In a toolbox, you might find a hammer. Now, hammers are used for what? Driving nails into wood, removing nails from wood, or maybe some small demolition jobs. In a, in a toolbox, you might also find, what is this, guys? I'm going to test you. What's that? Flathead screwdriver. That's good for driving screws, right? And also for maybe prying or scraping. And here's a quick tip for you. If you're going to pry out a broken light bulb with this guy, make sure that electricity is turned off before you do that. Trust me. Trust me. A tape measure. Tape measures are good for measuring whether you need to build something or you need to know if your new TV will fit in your car. And and not only that, it's really fun to go like this. You can see how far you can get it out there. Yeah, just a little bit far. Oh, All right. Next tool. All right, needle nose pliers. Needle nose pliers are really handy for many household products, right? Because of their, their small and skinny shape, they're good for getting into small cavities and getting things out of there. And you can also use them to pinch your brotherhood. <laughs> But truth be told, there's a lot of tools that we use in our daily lives that kind of help us to live, right? Help us to um, live in the world, and they're really handy. Like, we have cars that allow us to get to where we need to go. We have cell phones, which allow us to communicate. And we have things like um, microwave ovens for people like me who don't know how to cook. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I wish there was a tool that would help us confront our feelings of worry and fear. If there were, we could keep it in our pocket next to our cell phone, and whenever we felt worried or fearful, we could use it, and our fears would bang. I think most of us could use a tool like that because as 21st century Americans, if you're worried a lot, you're in good company. I think a lot of the worries we have stem from the unknown, the things we can't control, the what-ifs. All those what-ifs in life can take hold of us and leave us trembling with fear. What if I don't get a good job? What if I can't pay my bills? What if my mom has to go to the care center? What if cancer wins? What if I'm not well liked? What if I don't get into that good school? What if my retirement runs out? What if? I often find myself lying awake at night trying to solve the puzzle of what if. And if you've ever been there before, you know that this provides nothing but tired eyes in the morning. Not a solution to your troubles. So my question for you today, brothers and sisters, is what are you fearful of today? What are you struggling with today that brings your heart fear and trouble? What keeps you awake at night as your mind spirals in the tornado of what if? What if I told you there actually is the tool that overcomes fear and trouble? What if I told you that this tool is one that you can't buy on Amazon.com, nor can you buy it down there at the hardware store? What if I told you that this tool is one that you can't buy at all, because this tool is one that you already have? The tool I'm referring to, of course, is the peace of Christ. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus is equipping his disciples. For he knows his departure is very soon. In verse 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Jesus equips us with the tool of peace because he knows we will always need peace in our lives as we encounter troubles and fears on the road of discipleship. The peace of Christ is the tool that we receive that overcomes trouble, worry, and fear. But Jesus does more than just hand us a tool. 
He also gives us the owner's manual so that we can utilize it. After Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, Jesus says this. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The key phrase here is do not let. By saying do not let, Jesus is saying that in order to benefit from peace, we must use it. Just like a tool that lies in your toolbox. When Jesus says do not let, Jesus is calling us to engage the gift of peace he has given us in overcoming fears and troubles. We are the ones who do not let troubles and fears make a home in our hearts. We are the ones who do not let ourselves live as though Christ's peace makes no difference. We are the ones who not, are not only passive recipients of Christ's peace, we are active users of it. So my question for you today, brothers and sisters, is how will you utilize Christ's peace in your life? How will you actively engage the tool that you already have to overcome the fears and troubles that you will encounter? My word to you, it won't be easy. <clears throat> like working with any tool, we have to practice using it to get good with it. Like using a hammer, you're going to hit your thumb a few times at first. But the more you practice, the less fear and trouble you will encounter. And unlike some who think that overcoming fear and worry is a matter of being more brave, more courageous, and stronger, I tend to disagree. I think that overcoming fear and trouble means owning up to it and acknowledging it. Letting yourself be vulnerable enough to say, I'm scared, I'm worried, and I don't know what to do. I need help. And with that said, as we receive Christ's peace, we are also called to be tools of God's peace in the world. We are called not only to seek peace for ourselves, but to share Christ's peace with those around us. After all, who would be more qualified to help those who are struggling with fear and worry than someone who has been through it themselves? What would be more peaceful than for someone to put their arm around you and say, I know you're really worried. I know you're scared. It's okay. I'm here for you. So as you leave here today, brothers and sisters, I encourage you to keep using the tool of Christ's abiding peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. Utilize Christ's peace in your own lives. And then take that same peace to go and help others overcome their fears and troubles. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Be Thou My Vision, number 790.